Now, Boko Gaiden, the rampaging monster robot, and I love this, his uh, thing breaks there and it kind of trips over. Boko Gaiden is not a very imposing looking boss. It looks like a giant wind up tinker toy, as you can see there. But don't let that fool you. He's got several, several super painful attacks. We'll start with his weakest and go from there. Runaway Oppression, which actually comes from his belly, which should be your first target, hits your entire party for about 3,000 physical damage and can cause paralysis. His second move is Schwarzstraw. It hits a single uh, ally for about 4,000 points of dark damage. Half of that on Brad because he's got a dark ring, which is why I put the dark ring on him. Kind of a, a, a dual thing there. Actually, no, I want to reverse that. I want you to cast High Weapon on Brad, and I want you to use the lucky card. You actually want to have a couple of uh, Hype Weapon Crest Caps in your inventory because of his other attacks. Uh, he's got a uh, attack that comes from his Drill part called Drill Draugr. It hits an ally for about 5,000 points of damage. It will actually do more probably to Brad since he doesn't have up physical defense. And finally, his most powerful move, Whole Body Attack. It's for about 6,500 points of damage. Anybody that gets hit with full body attack is more than likely going to die. So, yay. Actually, invincible. When Lilka is not doing anything, have her use invincible, usually. Uh, typically, I save the invincible for after I've killed the belly and the drill. Because after you kill the belly and the drill, his only two attacks are Schwarzstraw and Whole Body Attack, and he tends to prefer Whole Body Attack. The great thing about Whole Body Attack, though, is that it actually can miss quite a bit. Good, he cast Drill Dogger. That's really good. Because, because he cast that. But Force Charge. Mystic, the Life Orb. Go ahead and punch the belly. Uh, both the belly and drill have 50,000 HP. Bulk Guide himself has 9,000. Uh, 9,000. No, 99,999 HP. He's weak to all elements. And as you can have seen, he hits like a freaking Mack truck. Uh, luckily, once you kill the belly, he's only able to... God damn it. He's only able to attack one person at a time. And I'm having a hard time here because he's not hitting Loka. Anyway, just keep attacking the belly there. You may have noticed that I uh, actually have 99 Revive Fruits and 99 uh, <laughs> War Respites. I have nothing else to spend my money on, so I took a a little detour down into the uh, the black market, and they sell those, so yeah. I don't want to do that because there's a fairly good chance he'll... Well, I'll just force charge again. Um... This is actually kind of bad. Yeah, we'll do this again. will boost the railgun on his belly. Now the reason 
even though his physical attacks will actually do more damage than a boosted railgun, I do recommend you actually boost a railgun shot or whatever uh, whenever you get 100 FP. The reason being that when Brad hits an F a force level, he actually gets HP restored. Yep, that just gave me 50 FP. That's good. There we go. Now, if you're in a situation like this, and I'm going to go ahead and do one just to show you, where both of your other party members are inflicted with paralysis in this fight, and they need healing, they will not survive another attack, I recommend you actually Mystic and Ambrosia because it will cure that and restore everyone back up to full HP. <laughs> Usually he uses Runaway Oppression more. Damn it. See, if I had one level of Uh, up physical defense, which I actually probably could have bought now that I think about it. Uh, he probably would have survived that. So anyway, force charge. I just need to get... I just need to get Ashley into his Night Blazer form, and this fight is all but over. Because he is weak to fire and gun blazes fire elemental, and when the power boost procs. Oh, she did. Yeah, there is absolutely no way she can survive that. Alright. Full revive on Lilka in case he does something crazy like runaway oppression. Because if he does run away oppression, if I had just done a regular revive fruit, it would kill her because it does about 3,000 points of damage and that would not restore 3,000 HP. Alright, so now, mini carrot on Ashley, revive fruit on Brad, and I gun blaze the stomach, and no more runaway oppression. And from this point on, I can pretty much get by with, well, just by using my revive fruits. Well, as soon as I kill the stomach, that is. The belly. Excuse me. Yeah, it didn't proc. But that probably killed the belly. I don't know. Are the guns still moving? It's kind of hard to tell with the dynamic camera. Oh, ho, 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 she didn't die. That's amazing. Okay, nope. Belly dead. Drill. Mystic. Life orb. Punch. Drill. Oh, trust me, you'll know when the power boost procs. It's very nice. Even if it doesn't ever proc, 20,000 is really nothing to sneeze at. Of course, Brad's dead has died, so he actually doesn't have his hype weapon on anymore. I need to have her use a mini carrot on herself. Brad, use one of those.
pretty much from this point, Ashley's going to be doing most, if not all, of the damage. Uh, everyone else is just pretty much there to soak up hits. Awesome. She should be able to survive that. And it gave her a nice FP boost. So Mystic. Life Orb. Punch the drill. Bulk of Guidance not really hard. His main... I'd say the main danger in the fight is uh, Runaway Oppression and its ability to paralyze pretty much two-thirds of your fighting force at one time. All of his other attacks are pretty manageable, uh, especially when you consider that as soon as you get away from the fact that Runaway Oppression hits everybody and you kill his belly, he can only hit one person at a time. So, worst case scenario, he kills somebody, you revive with one person, you attack with the other. It's really not that big a deal. In fact, I'm, I think I'm going to go all out this turn. Come on. Man, you haven't procced yet. Ah, oh well. Ooh, that was a good turn. Is that a critical? Probably being a little too uh, offensive here. It's probably kind of a bad idea. But, you know, whatever. He's really almost dead. Oh, yes. He has life returner. It restores 7,500 HP. Which is literally a drop in the bucket. I didn't mean to use easy missile. I actually wanted the regular attack, but I was going too fast. And for that, we get 80,000 experience. Bumped up to level 54. Two coin purses. Uh, I actually do not know if the coin purses in this game stat. So, if you know that, let me know. If you don't know, that's, that's a really good question. You've equipped three coin purses. Can you get uh, six times the gold from a battle? Your bulk of guidance wasn't so tough. Although, I will admit, if you had shown up with that thing way back on disc one, we would have been obliterated. You giant who taught me about justice and courage... Bulka Gaiden! It's a very odd line. Of course, what immediately comes to mind is uh, the old, I'm talking about old black and white type mecha animes from way back. Mazinger and older. Of your own design, this is not going to end well. Sad, I ran out of chocolate. <laughs> Your
You're not having like illegal cockfighting here. So Liz and Art aren't nearly as bad as we thought they were. Of course, really, I don't think that... I never thought they were bad. But, uh... But anyway, uh... Before I said that there was actually two missed opportunities here, one of them was the fact that they could have given Maravel a little more... Well, Maravel and everyone else, honestly, a little more dialogue. Uh, that is the first missed opportunity. The second one was they totally should have played Battle with Liz and Ard, the Liz and Ard's battle theme, you know, during the fight with Bulk Guy. Should have totally done that. And the fact that they didn't is incredibly disappointing because that is literally one of the best three songs in the game. Best three songs in the game are uh, the final world map music, not not in any particular order, but uh, the final world map music, Battle with Liz and Ard, and the uh, music that plays during the final battle of the game, the final boss. I don't think that was supposed to fall off. Oh, Brad. You and your kicking things that solve so many problems. So truth, violence does solve many, many problems. Apparently they are uh, staying on Felgaia for a little bit longer. Now, if you examine this as Maravel, you get Maravel's level 3 and level 4 force abilities. Lucifer and Asgard 2. Really, not worth it. They're not very good. Make sure you grab them now, because if you actually jump down, you, uh, mm, well, and leave the room, you actually cannot come back and get them. They disappear. But anyway, that concludes our dealings with Liz and Ard. Next time on Wild Arms 2, more sealed pyramid bosses. I'll see you then.